Hi, now here we've got an example based around the binomial distribution and I'm assuming you're familiar with the binomial distribution. If not, I've got plenty of tutorials on this on my website examsolutions.net. But if you'd like to uh, try this question, there's three parts to it, just give you a moment to uh, pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, first of all, we've got this random variable x that has the distribution, a binomial distribution, 12p. n, the number of trials, is 12, and p is the probability of success. And we're given that p equals 0 0.25 and asked to find the probability that x is less than 5, and then in part 2 here, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 7. Well, in the first part then, let's just put part 1 here, we've got to work out then the probability that our random variable x is less than 5. In other words, that's going to be the probability that x equals 0 plus probability x is 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 4. So we can say that this is exactly the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. And we should now be able to use the cumulative binomial distribution tables. Tables like these, where we have x is distributed binomially, np, and it gives us the probability of x being less than or equal to x. If we take our value of p being 0.25, look under 0.25, select number of trials n equaling 12 and our observed value x being 4 and you'll see that what we've got here under the 0 0.25 is 0 0.8424 so that's our answer nice and quick 0 0.8424 now in the next part of this question part 2 we'll just come down here label it part 2 we've got to work out the probability then that x is greater than or equal to 7. And again, we can use these cumulative binomial distribution tables because this is exactly the same as doing 1, that is the sum of all the probabilities, minus the probability of x less than or equal to 6. So, using the tables now, we just need to work out the probability x is less than or equal to 6, and that's given by this value here, 0.9857. So, 1 minus 0.9857, and if you work that out, you end up with 0.0143. Okay? Now, in part b, we're given that the probability x equals 0, equals 0.05 and we've got to find the value of p to three decimal places. Well this relies on the fact that we're familiar with working out probabilities from a binomial distribution. We should be familiar with the fact that if x is distributed binomially np the probability that x equals r is equal to ncr p to the power r q to the power m minus r where q is equal to 1 minus p. We often call q the probability of failure. So when it comes to this one, the probability x equals 0 equals 0 0.5, if I was working out the probability x equals 0, then using the formula here, it would be nc0, 12 would be the value of n, so we'd have 12c0, multiplied by probability p, to the power 0 and then multiplied by q to the power m minus r 12 minus 0 and q is 1 minus p so you can write that as 1 minus p to the power 12 so that's the probability x equals 0 and we're told it equals 0 0.05 now 12 c0 anything c0 is always 1 you can always check it out on your calculator though just by typing in 12c0. p to the power 0 is also 1. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So what we're left with is therefore 1 minus p to the power 12 equals 0.05. So to get 1 minus p, I've just got to 
take the twelfth root then of 0.05. And if I add p to both sides and subtract the twelfth root of 0.05, I end up with p equaling 1 minus the twelfth root then of 0.05. And if you do this on your calculator, you'll find that p turns out to be 0.2209 and so on. And if we round this to the accuracy that was asked for, three decimal places, then p is going to equal 0.221 to three decimal places, 3dp. Okay, now in the next part, part c, we're given that the variance of x is 1.92 and we've got to find the possible values of p. So we're expecting more than one here. Now to do this we should be familiar with the fact that the variance of a random variable x from a binomial distribution with parameters np is given by the formula npq. So therefore what we've got is for n it's 12 p we're trying to find, but q is the same as 1 minus p. So we've got 12p times 1 minus p, we're told, must equal 1.92. Now, if I divide both sides by 12, I would therefore get p times 1 minus p is the result of 1.92 divided by 12. And that turns out to be 0.16. And I can expand this. If I do, I've got p minus p squared equals 0.16. And I can see that I've got a quadratic equation now. And to solve a quadratic equation, I'm going to need to rearrange it, make it equal to zero. So I'm going to add p squared to both sides and subtract p. So therefore, what I have is p squared minus p plus the 0.16 equals 0. And I suspect that this will factorise. If not, I can always turn to the quadratic formula. But I'm going to put a p here and a p here. And I see this as 16, and I'm thinking 8 twos make 16. And uh, 8 and 2 is a 10. But if I'm using decimals, 0.16, I can see that I'm going to have to have minus 0.2 here and minus 0.8 there. And you can check that out. That will, in fact, give us uh, what we've got up here. And in the usual way, that means that p minus 0.2 must equal 0, or the other factor, p minus 0.8, must equal 0. And if we solve each one of these, p is equal to 0.2, or p is equal to 0.8. Okay?